Hey, welcome to part three of this guitar discovery series on writing better original songs. So presuming you already have some basic guitar skills, which is basically the ability to strum and play a few chords smoothly and evenly, songwriting really comes down to two things. One is the belief that you can do it, and two is the persistence to actually finish a song. Today we're going to learn from one of the best, John Lennon. Lennon has really been my personal favorite songwriter since I was a kid. And after all these years, that even surprises me. So I ask myself, you know, why is Lennon always and still my favorite? Well, stick around and find out and let's learn one vital lesson that you can apply to every song you write. Okay, so why is John Lennon my favorite songwriter? It's not like I love everything he ever wrote. You know, in fact, I think he had a fair number of duds. But here's what I realized. He was prolific. He wrote hundreds of songs, somewhere between two and 300 in The Beatles, with and without Paul McCartney, and 150 or so as a solo artist. So there's a lot of songs to like. He was innovative. He broke new ground lyrically and musically and influenced almost every other songwriter in the process. I personally remember being so excited whenever a new Beatles album came out, and I wondered what musical magic had John come up with this time. But most importantly for me, John Lennon was blatantly honest in his songs. He shared his truth even when it made him look bad. So you might say John was the master of getting real. And as songwriters ourselves, we should all learn from that. Learn to balance the positivity and optimism in our lyrics with a dose of real life truth, warts and all. So it's become a cliche to say that McCartney was all smiles and Lennon was all frowns. You know, it's more complicated than that, but it is true that the balance of light and dark elements are a big part of what make all those Lennon and McCartney songs so lasting. Okay, a couple examples. Um, Paul writes, we can work it out, we can work it out. And then John adds, life is very short. Typical Lennon. And when Paul writes, yes, I admit it's getting better. It's getting better all the time. John says, it can't get no worse. Early Beatles stuff was pretty much straight ahead rock and roll love songs. John and Paul songs conveyed a lot of brightness and happiness, but Lennon's intensity was already in there, mostly in the way he played and sang. You know, there was that mid-range growl and attack of his Rickenbacker electric, and he was willing to just totally shred his voice to convey the emotion of a song. I mean, no one ever sounded so emotional about twisting and shouting, you know what I mean? Then came A Hard Day's Night, and Lennon's lyrics openly show this darker side. I mean, there are negatives, challenges, heartaches, right in the song titles. Hard Day's Night, I should have known better. If I fell, I'll cry instead. You can't do that. It's like, he was determined to start telling the truth, even if it showed him to be less than perfect. And I think that tendency got even more obvious on Beatles for Sale, which we knew as Beatles 65 here in the States. That album opens with No Reply, which magnifies the usual heartache with a lot of jealousy and even anger. And there's I Don't Want to Spoil the Party, which shows John admitting to be a party pooper. I don't want to spoil the party, so I'll go. I would hate my disappointment to show. And there's an often overlooked song where John is completely self-deprecating. I'm a loser. I'm a loser, and I'm not what I appear to be. I mean, I remember hearing that for the first time and thinking, what? John Lennon is a loser? I just never heard a singer admit his own faults and imperfections so openly. Okay, so those songs gave way to what I think of as Lennon's existential crisis songs over the next few Beatles albums. There were songs like Help, which is <laughs> a cry for help. Uh, You've Gotta Hide Your Love Away, which shows some really deep insecurities. There's Nowhere Man, about being irrelevant, blind, and closed-minded. 
There's run for your life, which is a not so veiled murder threat. There's getting better where he says, I used to be cruel to my woman. I beat her and kept her apart from the things that she loved. And your blues, I'm so lonely, want to die. I mean, let's just say these songs don't make John look like the good guy or even a stable guy. And that takes major courage as a songwriter. Once Lennon's shell cracked open and he got real, he took us places no songwriter ever had. You know, he was writing psychedelic mind expansion songs uh, like I'm Only Sleeping, She Said, She Said, Tomorrow Never Knows, Lucy in the Sky, Day in the Life, I'm the Walrus, I'm So Tired, totally blew our minds with Revolution 9, and then that gorgeous Abbey Road piece, Because with all the thick harmonies. He wrote personal reflection slash biographical songs, some of my favorites, uh, In My Life, Strawberry Fields, Dear Prudence, Glass Onion, Julia, Don't Let Me Down. And then in and around the White Album, he wrote these one-of-a-kind novelty songs that were wacky but wildly original. Bungalow Bill, Happiness is a Warm Gun, Everyone's Got Something to Hide, Hey Bulldog. Incredible stuff. And of course, we all know Lennon for political and philosophical songs like All You Need Is Love, Revolution, uh, Come Together, which you may not know was actually an expanded version of a song Lennon wrote for Timothy Leary's campaign for California governor against Ronald Reagan. Anyway, keep in mind, all these songs I just mentioned were written during less than 10 years with the Beatles. And then he kept going, you know, as a solo artist, he seemed even more determined to bear his soul and show his own faults. And the songs got more personal and political. The whole Plastic Ono Band album is just raw and intimate. Songs like Mother, where he's got primal screaming going on, Isolation, God, where he's dealing with his own beliefs. And then there's the Imagine album, Jealous Guy and How are back to that self-deprecation. And there's more politics, Imagine, I Don't Want to Be a Soldier, Give Me Some Truth. He also wrote political singles, always with his heart and his beliefs on his sleeve. Give Peace a Chance, John Sinclair, Happy Xmas War is Over, I could go on. So if there's one thing every songwriter should learn from John Lennon, it's to be lyrically and musically courageous, to be honest about ourselves, our feelings, not be afraid to show our faults as well as our strengths. Emulate Lennon and your original songs will get real too. So that takes us to today's songwriting challenge. I want you to write something that exposes you, something you're uncomfortable letting others know, you know, an insecurity, a hidden truth about you, something that really feels like a risk. Get it off your chest in a song and see how it deepens your songwriting. And whatever you write, I do hope you'll be brave enough to share it in the comments with a link to an audio or video file. Okay, that's it for today. So far, we've had three videos about inspiring songwriters. Watch out for part four, where I'll tell you where to get ongoing inspiration from over a hundred more master songwriters. You're never gonna have writer's block again. See you then.